G'day everybody, Nick Dingler here again from the VB.net 2013 tutorial. This particular time we're going to be looking at arrays, and I know that we covered it before, and I promised you we'd be doing 2D arrays, but I'm going to put the link for the original arrays video down the bottom, and we're going to extend upon that, and the next video we're going to look at multi-dimensional arrays. We're going to look at three things in this video, generating a list or array of unique numbers, finding a number within an array and returning its index, and then sorting an array using a bubble sort. Now, all of these functions we can do because they're built into Visual Basic, but we're going to look at the actual theory behind them and doing them by scratch. So if you prefer not to learn any of this stuff, jump to the next video and have a look at multi-dimensional arrays. But right now, let's create a brand new console project and try this out. So I'm going to call it More Arrays, because I know you're all excited for it. So. First of all, let's attack our generate random numbers function. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create, oh, I'm just going to go function, generate numbers, and it's going to accept a number of parameters. First of all, how many numbers, I'm just going to call the size, then what the smallest random number is going to be, the maximum random number is going to be. Then I'm going to add an optional parameter here. Optional, oh, I can't spell. Optional, unique numbers as a boolean equals false. Okay. Now the return value for this particular function is going to be an array of integers. So the way you return an array of numbers is as integer and then the brackets after it. So that indicates that generate numbers will return an array of integers. So the reason I've got this optional unique numbers is because by default we're not going to return any unique numbers. We're just going to have a set of random numbers in an array between that number and that number. So first of all, let's set up our variables. So dim random as a new random. Okay, and this class is going to allow us to access the ability to create random numbers. We're then going to create an array which is going to be based on the size they gave us. So in brackets, you go size minus one as integer. Now, the reason I put minus 1 is because if we want an array with 10 numbers, for instance, then you put the number 9 in there, and the numbers range from index 0 to 9. And that's why you put a minus 1 on the back. Because if you want 10 numbers, you want to finish at 9. If you want 20 numbers, you'll finish at 19. It's always one behind because they start at 0. All right. So first of all, we're going to create a function to create random numbers. But we're not going to worry about unique numbers just yet. So, okay, time to create random numbers. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to loop through all of the numbers that we have. So 4i equals 0 to size minus 1. All right. Then let's create a random number. And I'm going to put it inside a temporary variable. Randnum. Random.next. Now, here's the one thing I just want to quickly make note of. The min value is inclusive, the max value is ex exclusive. So that means if I put in numbers 1, 10, it would randomly generate a number between 1 and 9 because it's exclusive. So if I want 1 to 10, I would actually have to go 1 and then 11. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to replace that with the min number they give us and then the max number plus 1, so it includes that maximum value. All right? And that will randomize between the smallest number and the largest number. Fantastic. Righto. Then let's put it, put it in the array. Numbers i, because that's the one we're going to be up to, equals random num. Now, I know some of you are probably saying, why don't we just go numbers i equals random.next, but I'm actually going to use this guy a little bit more when we go to the unique numbers. Now, let's just imagine we've gone through our loop. We're not worrying about unique numbers at the moment. This is the point where we have all of our numbers, so we return the... Uh, whoop, caps lock is on. Return the array. So let's return numbers. Now, because numbers is an array of integer, we can return it in generate numbers. Okay, so let's quickly test it out. If you need to pause the video and type all that stuff up, please do so now. So I'm going to scroll down, we're going to go to submain, and we're going to generate some random numbers. So how do we use this? So you'll go dim numbers and empty brackets this time, as integer, equals generate numbers, and then we fill in our parameters. So 
So size, I'm going to go 100, or no, let's just go 10 for the moment. Minimum, 1. Maximum, 100. And we'll leave unique numbers alone. Okay, let's print these to the screen. So we're going to have to for loop through them, unfortunately. So 4i equals 0, 2 numbers. Dot si, oh, count, minus 1. Console right line, numbers i. So we're going to print the numbers one by one to the screen, then we'll read line so we can read it. Okay, if you need time to type that up, pause, but I'm going to press play. And there's my random numbers. Hopefully every time I run it, I get completely random numbers between 1 and 100. Okay, that works. Now I want unique numbers. I don't want to include any random number which is already inside of numbers. So for example, I'm going to calculate 10 random numbers here. If I've calculated 5 random numbers at this point, and the numbers, let's say, for instance, are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, for example. I know it's a really bad example, but if those numbers occur in numbers, I don't want them to ever come up again later on. So what we're going to have to do is if the number is contained inside of numbers, so if random num is contained inside of this guy, then we generate another number. And we will keep doing that until its random num is not contained. So we're going to use a for loop for this one. But first, let's check if they actually want unique numbers. So do we want unique numbers? So if well, unique numbers equals true, then we're going to do a, a loop here. So while numbers dot contains, lovely little function, random number, then we'll copy and paste this line of code here because we're going to generate another random number. So while we already have that number, generate another one. Now, if you're thinking about this and you're saying, well, we could, if we're going to say calculate 10 numbers from 1 to 10, then the, the last number is going to have to be very specific. There'll only be one number we can pick from when we get to the last one. All right? And yes, that is a bit of a problem. It's going to be a performance issue. And there are other ways to go about this, but this is the easiest way to code it. All right? One problem we might have is if we want five, sorry, if we want ten random numbers, and we're only picking from one to five. That's going to cause a problem because we'll be stuck in this loop forever. But we're not here to solve errors. That's actually your job. I'm here to teach you how to do it in the first place. So let's turn on unique numbers. True. Now none of these numbers should be repeated, and it looks like that's the case. Eight, nine, six, seven. Yep, looks perfect. Now here's the real test. I'm generating from one to a hundred. What if I generate one hundred numbers? You should never ever see a repeated number in that list. And I think it should be right. And we can test that later on when we sort the numbers out. But that is how you generate unique numbers inside an array. Okay, if you still need time to code, please do it, because I'm going to move on to finding a number and returning its index in the array. So, function, find number. It's going to take two things, an array of numbers and the number we want to find. Okay, and then the return value for find number is going to be the index. So it's going to be an integer. All right, in this particular function, what we're going to do is we're going to range, we're going to go through the array as soon as we find the number they're looking for. So this guy here, we're going to return the position in which we found it. There's one limitation with this, and that is it's going to only ever return the first instance of that variable. Now we could add a third parameter here, which where they could change where they start looking from. So they could start looking from... I know 10 instead of 0, but I'm going to leave that up to you later on. Now, what kind of search are we looking? We are going to perform a linear search, which means we start at the first number in the array, check if that's the number that we want. If it isn't, we look for the next number. If it is the number, then we return the index. Now, what happens in the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is that the number doesn't exist in the array. So in that case, you return minus 1, which would indicate to the user of your function that they have not found the number. Okay, you've done your job, it's up to the user to do a little bit of work as well. So let's loop through all of our numbers. 4i equals 0 to numbers.count minus 1. Let's check if it ex are they the same. So check if we found the number. 
with a quick if statement. If numbers i equals the number defined, then return i. So i is the index that we're up to, so you return i in that case. Now, as soon as you hit this return, it's going to jump outside of this. It's going to jump down to end function and finish off our find number function. If we ever get to this point, that happens. So let's return the minus one just there. That's literally all the code that we have. Linear searches are simple to implement. They're so piss easy. Look at how much code that is. It's bugger all. But if you have 10,000 numbers you're looking for, Worst case scenario, again, we don't find the number. You've got to look through 10,000 numbers just to return minus one. So linear searches can be very CPU intensive. Okay? But that is probably the simplest way that you can perform a search in an array. Let's test them out. Let's say I'm generating 100 numbers from 1 to 100. Let's say I want to find the number 50. I'm just going to quickly comment this guy out. Okay? So let's console right line, find number. What are my numbers? I'm going to pass it just numbers. The number defined is 50. And it should hopefully return the position of that number. Let's run. So it's in position 28. It's in 55. It's in 52, etc. So it's grabbing the position of the number 50. All right, and only the first position. Now I know I've got unique numbers, but it will still only return the first instance of that number. Right, that's your linear search. Okay, if you still need to write that up, please pause the video because I'm going to move on to sorts. Okay, so functions, sort, numbers. Again, I'll take numbers. Okay, oh, I don't need any other parameters because sorting numbers, we only need to do one job. And we're again going to return an array of integers. So this thing goes on the end. All right, so this is what you call a bubble sort. Now, a bubble sort is a very simplistic sort. Let me quickly illustrate how this is going to work. Let's say I've got five numbers, 10, 2, 55, 91, and minus 5, for instance. What a bubble sort does is it walks through two numbers at a time. So it'll start at 10 and 3, and then it'll move to the next two, and move to the next two, and move to the next two. And what it does with those pairs is it compares if the first number is larger than the second. If it is, it swaps them. So, what would happen then is I would go, is 10 bigger than 3? Yes, it is. So, 3 goes in the front and 10 goes next to it. And the rest of the numbers stay the same after that. We then move to the next pair, just here. So 3 would stay where it is. 10 is not larger than 55, so they stay the same. We then compare the next set of numbers. And we just keep going in this fashion. So, 91 is larger, so it's not going to change. And then we compare the last two numbers, and it keeps going like this until it gets to the end. All right, so what a bubble sort really does is pushes the largest number to the end of the array after what's called one pass. So that's the first pass. It's all it's done is push 91 to the end. We would then do a second pass, and 55 would be pushed next to 91. The interesting thing about this guy here is we're going to need one, two, three, four, five passes just to sort him out. So bubble sorts are simple, again, like the linear search, simple to code, but such CPU intensive times. So we would have to do four more passes to get this eye in order. One thing I want to note is because we push the biggest number to the end of the array, we can then ignore him for the second pass. And then when 55 is pushed into there, we can ignore him for the third pass and so forth. So let's code this bad boy and get him done. So let's, I'm going to start with 4J, and there's a reason for that, and I'll explain in a sec. Equals 0 to numbers dot count minus 2. Now, the reason I have minus 2 is because we're dealing with pairs. Okay, well, let, let me start simple. Minus 1, you always have minus 1 for arrays. And we had that up here because arrays started 0. Okay, the reason we have minus 2 is because we're dealing in pairs, and we're always one number ahead of where we are. So when we get up to 0, 1, 2, the third index, we're going to be dealing with the third and the fourth index. And we don't want to go any further than that, otherwise we're going to get an error. Okay, so let's check if the first number is larger. So let's go if numbers, numbers, j 
is greater than the next one, which is just J plus 1. Why am I putting brackets there? Too much C-sharp programming. Okay. Then we're going to perform a swap on the numbers. Which is not that hard, but you can't just go numbers J equals numbers J plus 1 and numbers J plus 1 equals numbers J because what you're doing is losing a number. You first have to back it up in attempt. Okay, then replace numbers J. So numbers J equals numbers J plus 1. And then numbers J plus 1 becomes temp. Just like so. So, let's say the numbers are 10 and 3. 10 would be in numbers J, 3 would be in numbers J plus 1. So this guy here, 10 gets jammed inside of temp. 3 gets jammed inside of this guy. So at this line here, numbers J and numbers J plus 1 are both 3. And then temp is 10, so you jam that inside of J plus 1. So it just swaps them over like that. All right. If we actually, let's return the numbers just here that we've worked on. If we actually ran this code right now, it would kind of work. It would do a single pass only. And you know what? I'm going to do it. Let's reduce it to five numbers between 1 and 10. I'll, make it un I'll leave it as unique. I'm just going to get rid of that. And I'm going to bring back this for That's why I commented him out. So let's perform the sort. Now to use the sort, because we're returning an array, we need to go numbers equals sort numbers and then pass it the numbers in the first place. I know how weird that looks. We're passing the array to sort numbers and then sort numbers is giving us back the sorted array. So if we hit play now, that's a really bad example. That's a better example. You can see the largest numbers at the end and these are still unsorted. Wow, that first one was incredibly unlucky. Okay, there's a number two, he's unsorted. But you can see again, the largest number is at the end of our array. Okay, now we need to modify this guy so he does more than just a single pass. So for five numbers, we need five passes to sort it. So let's do a four I loop just here. But always remember the minus one. So you put next down the bottom here. So our I is going to be the passes, how many times we look, um, go through the numbers once, and J is going to be the pass itself, do all the little work for us. Now, to make this a little bit more efficient, tiny bit more efficient, I said originally we can ignore the number at the end after a single pass. Now, follow me if you can. I starts at the number zero for the first pass, so we do all the numbers. When I is incremented to one, we've done one pass, and we can ignore one number. When we're up to the second pass, we've sorted two numbers, and we can ignore those two numbers. So, I'm going to put minus i on the end of this guy. So for the first pass, we ignore nothing. For the second pass, we ignore one. For the third pass, we ignore two, and so forth. So it becomes a tiny bit more efficient because we always ignore the ones that are sorted at the end. So, let's press play. That's not pressing play. Okay, sorted. Sorted, sorted. Now let's try the big guns. 100 numbers. 1 to 100. There you go. 100 down the bottom, 1 up the top. That's a bubble sort. I hope you enjoyed the video, everybody. If you still need to copy that code down, free field of pause and whatever like that. In the next video, we're going to look at multi-dimensional arrays, how powerful they are, how good they are, and how to use them. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Like, subscribe, comment, do whatever you'd like down the bottom. But I'll see you in the next one. Have fun till then. Bye.